Hey, what's going on guys? It's Splash here, and I'm bringing you guys my Hoda Barbarian Endgame Build Guide. So, start of Season 3, I just went into Barb, specced into Hoda, and I gotta say this has been a lot of fun. This build excels in pretty much every category, survivability, speed farming, being able to one-shot bosses, um, tier 100s, you could do it all. Uh, I do want to mention that I do have a build planner down below. Uh, I do have different variants of the build, one with uber uniques, one without, and one with regular uniques. So you'll be able to use any of these builds and still be able to produce hundreds of millions of damage. Um, the way we do this is we're scaling our overpower and damage while berserking. So let's get right into it. I'll show you guys my gear, the skill tree, the paragon, and uh, hope you guys enjoy. All right, looking at our skill tree, starting off, we're going to grab our basic skill, which is Lunging Strike, one point into Enhanced, one into Combat. And we're going to grab our uh, core skill, which is Hoda, Enhanced, and then Furious Hoda. Going down to our defensive skills, we're going to go ahead and put three points into Imposing Presence for the additional max life. I'm going to go ahead and grab Rally Cry, put a point into Rally Cry, one into Enhanced, one into Tactical. Coming down here to the Brawling skills, one point into War Cry, one into Enhanced, two into Booming Voices, and then three out of three on the Swiftness for the movement speed. And then for this build, I am running Charge. Went ahead with the Enhanced Charge and Power Charge. And then down here, these are two very important nodes, Aggressive Resistance for the Damage Reduction and then Prolific Fury. Going down here to the Weapon Mastery, this is just for some damage. Two points into Pit Fighter. One point into thick skin and three points into counter offensive. Going down here to the ultimate, max out Wrath of the Berserker. Then all three of the nodes to the left, we're going to max these out. This is Furious Impulse, Tempered Fury, and Invigorating Fury. One point into Heavy Handed. Three out of three on Brute Force and three out of three on Wallop. And for our key passive in the build, we are running on Bridled Rage. Although I would say if you don't have enough resource gen or if you're still leveling, you can definitely use Strained. Um, it's just as good, you know, in the early uh, stages. Going over to our expertise, we're using two-handed axe for the extra vulnerability damage, uh, and that's going to be it for the skill tree. All right, and looking at our Paragon board, starting out for the very starting board, we're going to go ahead and use the exploit glyph. This is how we're applying vulnerability in the build. For our second board, we're going to go with the Warbringer one, and we're going to grab the legendary node. And for the glyph, we're going to be using the Crusher glyph. Very strong. It increases our overpower damage as well as our damage while wielding maces so that's pretty good for the third board we're going to go ahead and grab the bone breaker board just so we can get that legendary node a little bit early on and then we're going to go back up here to our fourth board which is going to be the carnage board and we are grabbing the legendary node and we're going to go ahead and put our dominate glyph here which is important for the build because it scales our overpower damage going to the fifth board we grab the blood rage board and for our glyph, we're going with the Ire Glyph, which boosts our damage while berserking. It's a very important node because, as you can see, it just gives us a ton of multi-damage. Right here, I have a 53% multiplicative damage because I have damage while berserking rolled on pretty much everything. And this glyph helps, and we're grabbing like some of the berserking nodes as well. Uh, we're going to go back down here to the board 3, uh, the Bonebreaker board, and we're going to insert the Martial Glyph here. And then for our last board... I went with the decimator board just for a little bit of extra damage, although you can swap this out and you should have enough points to grab weapon master if you're having uh, like fury if issues. If you feel like you're not having enough fury or enough resource gen, I would definitely take off decimator and just put on the weapon swap. Alright, now looking at the gear for the build, I did min-max my character the best that I could. I also have the uber uniques on, but I just want to point out that in the build planner below I have the different variants for the uber uniques, the regular unique, and then a build with no uniques. So let's go through it. If you guys have Shaco, this is going to be best in slot for the helmet. If not, I would use the Tusk Helm, and then doing bosses, I would throw on the God Slayer. For the chest piece, running the Juggernaut aspect, I went with the Max Life, Damage Reduction, Damage Reduction while Fortified roll, as well as Fire Resistance, just so I could cap my resistances. Although, if you guys are already capped on resistances, you could just go with another DR roll here. The gloves, attack speed, crit chance, overpower, ranks of Hoda, and with the quake aspect for Hoda. For the pants, Tabalt's will, these are going to be best in slot. Although, if you're pushing like tier 100s and your armor is not capped and you feel like you need a little bit more DR, 
would always have a backup pair of pants and uh, I put on the my aspect uh, just for these pants just in case I'm running high tiers and these have three DR rolls with total armor that keeps me capped and it gives me some damage reduction just in case I need for the boots, we're running the Relentless Berserker aspect. I have max evade charges on the boots with movement speed, lightning resist, poison resist, shadow resist. Um, this essentially just helps me hit my cap on resistances. As you can see here, they're all capped. Going down to the weapons. So for the two-handed mace, you guys want to make sure this is selected to Hoda. And you want all stat strength, overpower, damage while berserking, and the limitless rage aspect. For our dual wields, same thing, you want all stat, strength, overpower, damage while berserking if you can get it. Then uh, Earth Striker aspect as well as Edge Masters. Now for the two-handed sword or the slashing weapon, if you have Grandfather, this is definitely going to be best in slot. If not, you could just run a regular two-handed sword or two-handed axe. And um, I think for that one I put on the Edge Masters. So you would put Edge Masters on your two-handed sword and then you would put the quake aspect on one of your dual wields and then you could actually run accelerating aspect since you would have an extra spot so that's what you would do there the jewelry uh ring of red fear this is going to be best in slot pretty much gives us guaranteed crit um for the second ring this is honestly very dependent on personal preference i have crit chance max life max fury resource gen with echoing fury I know a lot of people would rather have the damage while berserking on this ring and rather than echoing fury a lot of people run bold chieftain so this ring is very you know dependent on what you want to run I think both are very good options I don't think there's one that's better than the other they both kind of work in the same way and then for our amulet best in slot banished lord talisman you ideally want to have a high roll on the aspect on this but uh, that's the build this is the gear that I'm running and let's go ahead and do like a tier 100 if I have it. So we've got tier 96, tier 93. I will go ahead and just do a tier 96, show you guys how the build runs, how it operates, and I'll try to speed run this for you guys. Get into it here. Right. Yeah, so as you guys can see, I mean, it's just a lot of basic core, just a lot of weapon swapping, which gives us our fury, and you're just producing huge numbers because we have like four different ways of creating overpower. We have the amulet, which gives us guaranteed overpower, and then our damage while berserking is scaling all that damage. Pretty fun build. I mean, it clears all the content in the game. Might not be the best for the gauntlet because it's probably not the fastest. But this build's all around a ton of fun, very easy to play, and if you guys just want to clear content like this, one-shot bosses, this is definitely the build to go with. It's probably the strongest this season. I think it was also like the strongest last season too, so definitely a good option here. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's just a ton of fun to play. Alrighty, 
And there's a tier 96 for you guys. Didn't really have a hundred that I could show you. I'd be crafting uh, vigils all day long trying to get a tier 100. But hope you guys enjoyed the build. Like I said, the build planner will be in the description below. I uh, appreciate it if you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know down below if you guys tried it out, if you liked the build. And for the upcoming future, I think I'm working on a Blizzard Sork build that might be pretty good for the gauntlet. And then I'm going to go ahead and make a double swing charge build that I think is going to be overall the best for the gauntlet. So stay tuned for those and hope you guys enjoyed.